here's, here's the longer conversation, and by longer, I mean this is at least a one-month, if not two-year conversation. Now you're really intrigued, right? No, not all at one time. I'm not keeping you here until 2020. So, um, so here we go. Uh, this church, this congregation, in 1995, revived itself with the vision of evangelism. God breathed new life when we had a pastor, an older pastor that came in with just a heart for reaching out. And we saw this church go from 12 people to 16 people to baptizing 172 people before the year 2000 hit. In five years, they went from something that almost closed its doors to something that altered this community. Now, over the years, we've had our peaks, we've had our valleys. And we, as about four years ago, we decided we were in a valley and we wanted to pray about how to find a peak. And so we started something called Share Ministries. You hear about this once a month, you may have never known what that means. But what happens is once a month, on the, on the second Sunday of each month, our staff, which comprises of Ryan, myself, Sally, we've got volunteer staff like Lisa Witzkin, uh, like Eric DeWiggins, who couldn't be here this morning. Uh, we've got, we've got uh, Rebecca Miles and uh, Jane Thompson and Alicia Pittman and, and all of these volunteer staff. And then we've got our board members. We've got David Price and uh, Lori Radcliffe. We've got Sue Butler. We've got Tearly DeWiggins. And we've got Brian. Brian, right here. Um, these are our board members, and we have invited once a month for, for these leaders and any of their spouses that wanted to be involved to come together and to pray for each other and pray for vision. And so this, this past year in, uh, in September, we actually started something where we fasted as a group for one week, and our prayer was this, God, tell us where the greatest need in our community is and share with us how we are specially trained to meet that, that mission, that need. And so we, we've thought through things, we've prayed through things, and we came back with something, and the Echo Project that's there on the back wall is a huge part of that. But then we thought that was it. As I'm looking at my leaders, they're going, yeah, we thought that was, we, we had done what we were supposed to do, and that was the only thing. Well, in January, uh, second week in January, I received a phone call from the Hispanic Concilio of the Church of God, which is essentially the church planting uh, Spanish church vision of the Church of God. And Pastor Jim Johnman called me and he said, Trey, I hear that your church is doing some outstanding things to reach your community. And I would like to open a conversation to talk to you about starting a Hispanic church in your walls. Now, is that revolutionary? Is anything like else, else like that happening in the Pendleton area? No, none of that. And we've been praying as a leadership team, how can we get our doors open and our, and our church filled seven days a week, 24 hours a day, so that the kingdom of God is changing and growing, so that our community is being reached and changed? And so I am very happy to stand to with you this morning. I announced this in full form to our leadership team last Sunday. And the first question I got asked, well, actually, I guess the, the first thing I was told when I sold this was, hey, that fulfills our mission of trying to get people in our church seven days a week, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of does. The second question was, how quickly can they get started? I said, wait, back up a second. So here's the deal. We are coming to you with this amazing, exciting introduction of a ministry and I want to introduce to you, uh, many of you have had a chance to meet Pastor Ramirez and his family. Pastor Ramirez, would you please stand? And your family, too. Yeah. And so, yes, uh, his whole family that's been coming with him. Uh, before, before we knew if there was even a possibility of us having a Spanish-speaking church here inside of our walls, Pastor Ramirez reached out to me personally, and we reached back, and we and his son Walter and their whole family have met multiple times, and I just want to share with you that this man is legit, and he has such a heart 
for the lost, and he has such a vision for mission and ministry. And so uh, I, I just wanted to introduce you guys, and, and here's what we want to do. Um, over the next month, yeah, yeah, you guys can have a seat. Sorry, you feel like you're being watched now. Um, uh, over the next month, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your words of confirmation. We want to hear your words of encouragement. We want to hear any questions you have. We want to hear any concerns you have because we want to make sure that everything has been addressed. We have spent, as a leadership, four years praying for God's wisdom on how to carry the mission and the ministry beyond our own understanding. And so now, as Pastor Ryan is going to be bringing this morning the story about seeking guidance and seeking wisdom, we're now in the place of seeking guidance from you, our fellow Christians, our congregation. How can we move forward with this in a way that glorifies God? No, the decision has not been made. We didn't make a decision without talking to you. But on April 12th, as a board, we're going to meet together as a share group. We're going to meet together, and we're going to take everything that you've told us over the last month, and we're going to use that under serious consideration of how we can move forward with ministry with Pastor Ramirez and his family. So here's a couple of ways for you to know more. Number one, today do you have lunch plans? Would you like some pizza? Today, Pastor Ramirez and his family have agreed to stay afterwards with anyone that wants to hear his testimony, wants to ask questions, and know about, about what possibilities lie ahead here in, the, in Pendleton with the Hispanic community. He wants to know from you, do you know anyone who is, who is first generation or second generation Hispanic that, that is looking, or maybe not looking yet, but needs to hear of God? needs to hear about God, needs to know of a ministry that's here that's designed for Hispanic-speaking people. So, so that, is, that is one of the things he needs from us. Uh, but, but we're going to see how we, can, how we can pray for them, how we can help them, how we as a church can move forward. And so today after church, I want to host anyone who would like to stay to a, to a pizza lunch. So is that cool? You guys good with that? All right, I'll get a hand count. I'll give you a couple minutes to think about that, and then I'll get a hand count for how many people are going to stay so I can go order the pizza. Um, and secondly, on Easter weekend, uh, so that you guys would have an opportunity to see how church looks in the Spanish language. Because let me just tell you, white people are boring compared to what they do. And so I, I want to give you all an opportunity to see. And so on, on Holy Saturday of Easter weekend... At 7 p.m., Pastor Ramirez and his family and anyone else from the church that wants to come along, they're going to have an Easter service here on that Saturday evening, uh, April the 4th. And we are so glad to host that for them. They don't have a place. They haven't been attending another church that would be able to allow them to celebrate Easter in Spanish. And so we want to do that so that you have an opportunity to see them in worship. You have an opportunity to understand what that looks like. Um, and so... So come be a part of that as just part of our Easter week. All right. I'm wore out already. <laughs> so, all right, all right. Who all thinks they would like to stick around for lunch today and have some pizza? Well, yes, it's free. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. All right, awesome. I will order about eight pizzas, and we will have plenty of it for anyone who would like to stay. Thank you very much. I want to say a prayer over this. Yes, Mr. Mark. Uh, would you, Pastor Ramirez, would you come and share a word with, with our people? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put you right on the spot, right up front, right in the middle. He's a pastor. He's used to that. So we are twins, if you could not tell. <laughs> God bless you, brothers and sisters. It's a pleasure for me to be in here with you guys and see all the love you have for the people and to reach the community. I can share with you, I've been coming to be a pastor about 
20 years ago, uh, I was called from God to be a ministry. And uh, I'm sorry if you don't understand me. Uh, you need some interpretation. You understand me clear? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, his English is way better than he thinks it is. Yeah. Yes. Um, I have a little bit problem to speak, but I understand more than what I speak. But I meet Pastor Tread uh, through Brother uh, Gene Youngman. He's the church planting. And um, he was telling me about this guy, this pastor. He's, uh, he have a heart for a mission. And this is a mission for a Pendleton area. And uh, my heart is to help in the community and, and see what I can do for the Hispanic community. Or not only for the Hispanic community, for whoever need God, you know. Uh, and God, we are ones, no two, no uh, race. Uh, we are um, Hispanics, uh, Anglo or black people are the same on, on God, you know. So uh, we are brothers. So I have that pa passion to serve God, and uh, he has been talking to me, but he no not make any decision until uh, the church made the decision. So he uh, have a lot of respect for the church, and th that's good, you know, because uh, he, he know that the uh, last word has to come from the, from the people right here, you know. Uh, is you okay to ask, to let us to use the facility then uh, we're going to start working with the Spanish community. I have my family. Um, all my three children is born in here in the United States, in Virginia. Most of, my time, most, of, most of my time, I live in Virginia. So this is my uh, first move from Virginia to Indiana. So uh, right now, I think I, I am in a holy land for <laughs> church. <laughs> Church of God. So, uh, God bless you. And, uh, you know, when we have the pizza, we can talk some more. And thank you, Brother Trey. Uh, I, I have a lot of things to share with you guys. But uh, you, I know we, we need to hear the, the gospel, the preaching. So, uh, God bless you, Brother Trey. I know that in that small clip of time, you can see how amazing a man of God Pastor Ramirez is. And so uh, I know my Spanish is very poor, but I want you all to say with me, God bless in Spanish. Uh, Dios bendiga. Dios bendiga. May God bless you. And so, again, over the next few days, I'm going to ask our share group to stand uh, as, as staff and board, because I want to see, I want you to see the people who are going to be in the room helping to make that decision. Uh, but we've got Brian and Ryan and Sally and Tearly and Sue and uh, Lori and David. Um, and I know there's somebody else that's, there's a few people that aren't here today, but, but these are people over the next month, questions, comments, encouragements, concerns, questions you need answered. These are the people. Go and talk to them. Get Catch up with them one-on-one, -on -one, in small groups, whatever. But, but these are the people. And so I want to say a prayer of, of blessing on, on our leaders as we, as we work through this and, and a prayer of blessing on our congregation and on, on this, the new Hispanic community venture that we're looking at. So let's pray together. Father God, we are so thankful for the opportunities you lay before us. Father, we thank you for the mission that is always so much bigger than we are, but yet you have empowered and entrusted us with some amazing and great things. Father, we pray your blessing over each of these leaders that are standing this morning, that you will walk with them, that you will give them your wisdom and your guidance as they, as they interact with people uh, and, and share with them the, this great vision, this great mission that lies before us. Father, I pray for Pastor Ramirez and his family as they, are, as they are finding their new way in this new home, that you will bless them and that you will walk with them, that you will point them to the doors of people who need to hear your good words. 
Father, we pray for this congregation as we, as we move forward and as we, as we, we, we are considering this step into uncharted territories, God, that, that we will know that the unsafety, the unsafety that we feel is surrounded by your spirit, by your guidance, by your hand. And the fact is, God, you would call us out to do unsafe things all the time. You call us to depend on you. And so, Father, today I pray that in this time, in this place, in this instance, that we will rely so heavily on your hands. We will rely so heavily on your spirit to change us and grow us and prepare us. Father, we pray for that wisdom and that guidance that can only come when your spirit gets involved. God, I pray that you will help us to make the right decision that will, that, will, that will change this community and will change the kingdom of heaven forever because of what you're doing. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Ah.